So tell me about the seven day pledge. Yeah, so the seven day pledge is another success. Um, and the seven day pledge came out of our care team work. So as I said, the care team, um, as we hit a barrier, we tried to say, okay, how can we, what can we do to address this? And so, you know, I talked about what we did when we found that housing was a barrier. Well, another barrier that we found was that um, patients were being discharged from the hospital and it was very hard for us to get them uh, appointments with primary care within seven days. We knew that there was already very a very good evidence base that showed that patients who were connected to primary care quickly were more likely to be able to, um, you, you were more likely to be able to reduce readmissions um, and use of the ER. So we, because we're a coalition, we can go out and talk to people. And so we talked to um, primary care providers in the city, we talked to our hospital partners, and we realized that our primary care offices, um, who were just at the beginning of um, Obamacare and implementation, right? This is 2014, 2015. Mm -hmm. You have more Medicaid patients coming on the rolls. Our primary care offices still did not have the bandwidth to necessarily change their workflows to be able to um, easily say, okay, sure, we can see five new patients this week who are being discharged from the hospital. And not just easy patients, but patients who are gonna to need to take more time with because they have medical and social complexity. And so we said, well, what if we work with you to actually change your workflows? And we provide the staffing and we come in and help your staff to do that. And so they said, sure. So we um, uh, all came together and um, created a citywide campaign called the Seven Day Pledge. Um, hospitals and providers actually took the pledge um, that they would try as hard as they could um, for any Medicaid patient who was being discharged from a hospital to get them into the primary care office within seven days. Um, our clinical redesign team was born, which is a team that looks a little bit like a team you might find in a management consulting firm that actually goes in and looks at the processes you're using and helps you try to figure out how to change those processes. Um, and we did it. We did it across all of Camden. Our community advisory group actually had buttons that said seven day pledge, and they went around to primary care offices in the city to sort of um, uh, uh, support people, thank people, um, and we just in um, January um, published the results in JAMA Network Open mm -hmm. that showed, in fact, the patients that we were able to get into primary care within seven days um, actually had reduced admissions and reduced use of VR. So it, in fact, was successful it was as successful as we said it was going to be and so we're really really proud of that congratulations thanks it's wonderful to have a, a lofty idea but then to actually have the results to support it is huge yeah and it's such a it's just a community-wide goal um and the nice thing is that um you know many of our partners have actually now incorporated those changed workflows into what they do on a regular basis are those practice changes you're talking about are they pretty similar across the practices or is it very specific for each practice what needed to be changed in order to you know it, it is like everything there's some um some standardization you know in the same way imagine that doctor's offices change their scheduling around having more availability to sick patient visits right so some of it is um the same but some of it is like you know, spending time with the scheduler and figuring out how to make, you know, their life a little bit easier overall and not just related to these patients. So I would say that the, we definitely co-designed by practice. Um, and while there were standard workflows we were putting in place, we were also very attentive to the need to, you know, pay attention to local, local needs local as the office because you know what we know about these offices is that we have doctors and nurses who are totally committed to these patients and who really despite the fact that you know we are asking them to do a lot more do not have the staffing 
to really, you know, support this population. Mm -hmm. You know, they do not have social workers. They don't have community health workers, right? They do not have, you know, funds to bring in a management consulting firm to help them change how they do their workflows. I mean, they're really, um, you know, they are spread very thin and their focus is always on the patients right in front of them, which is absolutely what their focus should be. But that means that some of that sort of system change stuff is 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 hard for them to get to mm-hmm. yeah if if there were a provider or a group of providers who were gonna unofficially take the seven-day pledge what advice would you give them like how to get started so i would definitely um tell them that either among them um they maybe had to choose one of them to be a lead um, or find some little bit of money to have somebody help them be a facilitator across all the practices Mm -hmm. Um, and to keep count. Because one of the things that we did was on a monthly basis, we would go to the practice and show them how they were doing. And so they want to actually pay attention to the data Mm -hmm. and how they're doing. You know, are they seeing more patients? Um, Are those patients going back to the ER? Like really to use the data to help their practice. 